welcome back to Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. After our delay here at Freeland Stadium, we're set to kick off with the Freeland Dragons kicking off to the Tulsa Rebels. Kickoff point man for the Freeland Dragons is number seven, Gavin Hunt. Both teams have stretched and gotten loose on the field, so we're ready to get this thing started. And let's start off the 2019 Fairland football high school season. This is James Ward, a.k.a. Buzzy. I'm here along with uh, my good friend, Charlie Rhodes. Appreciate you all tuning in to the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel and Armstrong Sports for this, for this evening's game. Charlie, it has to be hard on these kids to sit back, get prepared, get ready to go, get stretched, get loose, only to have a delay. Get close to the end of the first delay to get on the field, getting ready to get loose again, and lightning just strikes again. So it's kind of a back and forth in motion. Yeah, they've been in, in and out of the locker room for the last two and a half hours. So uh, they had a good opportunity to stretch and get warmed up. So hopefully they can uh, get those emotions back in check and be ready to play. Focus. Got to get that focus back in line, get the mind right, get ready to play a good ball game right tonight. We had a nice crowd before the weather delay, but it looks like some of the fans have made it back way into the stadium. And here about an hour ago, this place looked like a ghost town. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin Meadows back deep for the Rebels. There you go. And that was number one. Zach Ball, he was cut down by Casey, Hunt, Casey Hudson and, and Brian Defoe. Brian Defoe. Rebels take over first and 10 at the 31 yard line. Blaine Cremines did a really good job of sliding off that block and kind of stretching it out to the side. Give uh, Defoe an opportunity to get in there and make a good tackle. The Dragons line up with the four man front with two linebackers and five defensive backs. Pretty much have a monster safety is what they call it, a three safety look. Rebels in a spread, shotgun. Brumfield missed the tackle. Looks like Kazee's got him wrapped up. Looks like somebody lost about two yards on the play. It's gonna bring up a second down as well for the Tulsa Rebels. Looks like Brumfield got a little excited, didn't remember to break down. And break down for that tackle. Gotta get those hot feet. Mm -hmm. Actually didn't lose any yards on the play. It's going to be second down and 10 from the 30. Trips right, single wide left, shotgun formation for the Rebels. Quick slide out pass. Got a push in the back. We're going to let that slide. We'll pick up about seven yards, maybe eight. Brought down by Gavin Hunt and Brennan West. And that was Gavin Meadows for the Rebels on the catch and run. Third and a long four. Coach Hinkle's getting the defense lined up at the secondary. No confusion on the lineup here for Tolson. Bad snap. Long balls on the ground. Looks like the Greens recovered. Looks like number six for the Fairland Dragons. That's Jordan Williams on the recovery for the Fairland Dragons. But they'll take over at the 32 yard line of the Tulsa Rebels, first and 10. That's what you expect. That's what you want to see happen, Charlie, on the first possession of the season. Get a turnover. Turnover in short field. Now, see if they can convert this turnover into some points. Looks like Max Ward comes out to start uh, quarterback for the Dragons this evening. You got Stitt in the backfield. Twins right, twins left. Shotgun set. Hand off the step, up the middle. He's going to pick up maybe 
three yards on the carry. It's going to be second down and seven for the Dragons. John Wilson on the tackle for the Rebels. It's going to be kind of a mix-up quarterback here for the Dragons. It's going to be a little bit of Max Ward, a little bit of Xander Schmidt. Mm -hmm. Kind of a two-headed monster here, Charlie. Got Brumfield in the backfield now. It's like a power formation mm -hmm. for the Dragons. J.D. Brumfield for the Dragons picking up about a close to a four, maybe five-yard pickup. So will bring three down in three. Tackled by a host of Tulsa Rebels. Tulsa's kind of in a 4-4 defense here, traditional 4-4. Still in a power set by the Dragons with Xander Schmidt in shotgun formation. Stitt and Brumfield, the deep backs. And off to Brumfield. It's going to be close. Looks like he may have it he, for a first he, down. I believe he picked up the first down. <laughs> Bringing in the wides. Ward back into the game as well. First and 10 for the Dragons. That's the 21 yard line of the Tulsa Rebels. Kind of a high pass there, but Hunt brings it in, but they're going to lose about seven yards on that play. It's going to be second and 17. Good defensive play there by Zach Ball. Pass is just a little bit high. Probably, probably would have been a little better off just knocking it down instead of taking the loss. That actually may have been Gavin Meadows on that. Looks like so far through this series that the turf's you know, sticking together pretty well. It's not really chopping up a whole lot, it doesn't look like. I figured with the rain that we and got leading up rain, into yes. the game that it would. Uh... Wide open on the out. Kind of a complete. be complete. Pick up that yardage that they had lost on the last play. Looks like that is uh, Xander Schmidt on the catch. Ward to Schmidt. Be third and 10 for the Dragons. Got the power set coming back in for the Dragons. Trail and student section looks like they made it back into the game this evening, Charlie. Brumfield up the middle. Looks like he's going to have enough awful close to a first down, if not a first down. Maybe a yard shy. It's going to bring up a fourth down and one for the Dragons. Direct hmm. snap to Brumfield coming up, folks. Yep. We're bringing the extra fullback. We'll have a straight snap to number two right here. This is when it's big boy football. Line them up. We know where the ball is going. Mm -hmm. You know who's getting it. Downhill football right here. We got false start. False start on the Dragons. Right, we'll Lineup might be about fourth and six now for the Dragons. Go, Dragons, go. Costly penalties, Charlie. You can't have costly penalties when you're deep down in the red zone of the opponent. That backs him up to the up the 15, 16 yard line of the Rebels. Couldn't tell if that was a, if that was on the center or if it was one of the linemen jumped. It looked like the ball was like awful. Several of the linemen yeah. jumped. So <laughs> it looked like the ball was awful late getting out of the, uh, back to the quarterback position. But it was one of those plays that you see that the, the uh, they just call false start on the whole offensive line. Yes. Max Ward back in the center. Actually in shotgun formation. 
Lobs it up for number seven, Kevin Hunt. He's out of play. That'll be a turnover on downs. And the Rebels will take over at the 19 slash 20 yard line, first and 10. Looks like Coach Cunningham's not real happy with that uh, last series of downs. Yeah, it's tough to go from fourth and short to fourth and six. And got six minutes left in the first quarter. Both teams have their uh, chances to get the ball moving. And it's back to the Tolls' favor now. They line up in a shotgun formation. Twins left, one single wide right. Missed tackle. You just can't have that many missed tackles like that. You have them dead to rights in the backfield. And Looks like Coffey was the one carrying the ball. And that gained about three. Looks like Brumfield, J.D. Brumfield made the tackle. And second and seven. Trips to the top side, single wide formation at the bottom. Come on, defense! Communication going on in the back, defensive backfield. Here comes a blitz. And blitz did its job, didn't get to the quarterback, but it did press the quarterback in to throw the ball a little early. It's incomplete pass will be third and seven for the Rebels. Coverage there by the Dragons, Gavin Hunt. It doesn't take long. Uh, once you realize that those Fairland linebackers are going to be in your face to get little happy feet and let go of that ball a little bit early. They are aggressive. Both linebackers are very aggressive. Number 23, Raleigh Kazee, and number two, J.D. Brumfield, both sophomores with a lot of playing experience last year as freshmen. I guess that's what you call actually um, the uh, boys to men type. Yes. Turn Quick, from quickly. boys last year to men Go. this year. Little pullback draw up the middle. Didn't pick up much, maybe two. Tackled by the interior of the Fairland defensive line. Defoe and it's like uh, Kyle Rankin, number 65 for the Dragons. It's going to be fourth down and six with a punt return coming up for the Dragons. Both of them. Kind of shuffling the kids in and out for the punt return. Punts away, goes over the shank. Looks like it's going to go out about the 40 yard line, maybe even a little bit earlier than that. Marking about the 37 yard line of the Tulsa Rebels with the Dragons to take over. First and 10 after a 17 yard punt. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Dragons line back up in the power formation with one split wide to the top. Gavin Hunt. Snap the snap. Hand off the stick. Not going to be much of a game there. Will be brought down by number 61 of the Tulsa Rebels, and that is T.J. Jackson. They had a tight end. Seven, 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 they had a tight end that time. That's the yeah. first time this year I've seen them have a tight end. Yeah, that's uh, Blaine Means in there for the uh, tight end action for the Dragons, number 26. He's a senior. Talk about a hard-working, strong kid. They're keeping the tight end set. And off to Michael Stitt. Little scatterbug jumping in and out. Looks like he's going to break free and go in for the Dragon touchdown. Touchdown, Bell Dragon. About a 35 yard touchdown for Michael Stitt. And that'll put the green team up on the board, 6 0. With their new minute kicker, number one, Emma Marshall, coming in to give birth the extra point. That's some good blocking by the line, but better running by Mr. Stitt. He is so shifty. So shifty. He looks like a water bug, man. He's all over the place. 
Come on, hero! Oh, but... Snap good, hold good. Kick is good. And after the extra point kick, the Fairland Dragons take the lead of seven. Coach Rebel, zero. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Good job, girl. Gavin Hunt back to kick off for the Dragons. They're already doing the half and half here. <laughs> Hunt kicks it. Nice deep kick. Back to the 15. A little bit of a lane. Oh, good way to come up right there and make a tackle, Gavin. Ball in return up about the 35-yard line of the uh, Coast Rebels. That was a good tackle by Gavin Hunt. It's like Kyle Rankin got in there and got him a little piece, too. So. Shotgun formation with the Rebels. Snap. Quarterback keeps around the left end. Oh, big hit. And we got a flag down. Got a holding call. Hit by Brennan West and had a little bit of a hold in the backfield of the Rebels. That's going to back him up 10 yards. Number two, J.D. Brumfield. That's West. Holding against the Rebels. That'll be a holding against the Rebels. And that is a spot foul. So we'll go from the 30-yard line back to the 20. It's going to be about a first down and first down 25, 25 for the Rebels. Dragons now in a three-man front with uh, three linebackers, kind of a three-three with five defensive backs. We got false start, maybe. Got the the delay game. The delay game. Yep, delay game on the Rebels. That'll back them up five more. The Fairland Dragons has the Rebels' offense going in their right direction. Has to be frustrating as a coach. I know it's early in the season, but we've had a couple of uh, mental mistakes here on both teams. Dragons on the off sides, not here on a holding and a delay. And for what I'm saying, that that call right there is on the coaching staff because the quarterback's looking over. It looks like to get any audibles that he needs out of that play, and the coach is getting them late in. And the coach is getting them late to him. It's like Williams on a sack. And that is going to be a sack, and they're going to be going back again another five yards. It'll be second down this time. Good sack by number six for the Fairland Dragons, Jordan Williams. It'll be third down and 30. I don't know if you have a play for that. But we want to see. Excuse me, I apologize. Second and 30. Still don't think there's a play in the playbook for that amount of yardage. What you got to do here, Charlie, in my opinion, you got to try to get at least 10 of those 30 yards back. 10 to 15 yards of those 35 yards back where it makes fourth down or third down somewhat realistic. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe a screen. Nope. And quick little out, try to get 8 to 10 yards back. And that's about what happened. They picked up about, I don't know, 15 yards on that. It was a nice pitch and catch by the uh, number 8, Gavin Meadows, for the Rebels. And what you're doing there is a DB. You just don't want to get beat deep. Mm -hmm. You got all kinds of yardage behind you. Keep the guys in front of you. Let them make that catch. Get the 10 yards. Make a tackle. Make it be third down. You've got to make that tackle right there. That's five extra yards after contact. You've got to make that tackle as a corner. Mm. 
Brumfield on the tackle. Another little pitch and catch. Number eight, Gavin Meadows on the catch. That's going to pick up about another eight to ten yards on that. It's going to be fourth down. And it comes the return team for the Dragons. Gavin Hunt on the return for the Dragons. Tackled by the Dragons, number 23, Raleigh Kazee. The Dragons take over at the 49-yard line. We've got an injured player on the field. Looks like maybe he's stretching. Maybe just cramp. Let's hope that's what it is. It's number seven, Gavin Hunt, the dragon. <laughs> You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Looks like number seven, Gavin Hunt's going to be okay for the Dragons cramping oh, up a little bit. We looks like we're going back to Brumfield quarterback. Back now. to the power formation here, perhaps. Dragons take over first and ten at the 49-yard line. Of their own 49-yard line. We're moving early. Williams on the carry. Picked up about four yards for the Dragons. Be second down and six. Four-yard game, we're just second down and six. The Can't tell me that's not odd to watch Brumfield come over and get the play call and get the the quarterback. That's a different little wrinkle, though. That's yes, what I'm saying. Uh, yes, Brumfield hand it off. Usually he's taking it and going. So we moved early again. That can be on number 56, Casey well, Hudson. Well, eager to get that pull towards the right side. <laughs> Looks like we want to shuffle in the uh, personnel here. We'll be second down about 11 for the Dragons. Hmm. Groin, weather yeah, stretching him out. Looks like he's all right, though. Yeah. So that wasn't a cramp issue mm -hmm. there. You know what I mean? That was more like a groin or. Mm -hmm. Dragons break the huddle. Second down 11. Max Ward at quarterback. Going we'll to have yeah. a timeout by the Dragons. A little confusion. Lining up a little bit slow and a little bit of confusion, like you said. So it's. I'm out Dragon. 21 seconds left in the first quarter with a score of Fairland Dragon 7, Tulsa 0. We'll take a break. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. And we're back for the Dragons take over, second down and 11. On the 48-yard line, their own 48, with 20 seconds left in the first quarter. We got twins left, single wide right. Ward in the shotgun. We have a little flip pass to Stitt. He's open with some blockers. Michael Stitt's going through the hole. He's going to get a first down. He's still running. He's still going. Gets brought down about the 20 yard line, maybe 19 yard line. It'll be a first down and 10 for the Fairland Dragons. <laughs> you ever see those movies at the county fair where they have a grease pig contest? That would be a lot like catching a greased pig. Good luck with that. That'll be in the first quarter. 33-yard game for the Fairland Dragons. Pitch and catch and run. And that's the end of the first quarter with the Fairland Dragons holding the lead over the Tulsa Rebels 7-0. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. We're kicking off the second quarter with the Fair and Dragons first down and 10 at 
the Rebels 19 yard line. Run some power football with Jander Smith being the uh, quarterback. Little sweep to the left side. Smith looking for some room, has some room. And he's in for a touchdown for the Fairland Dragon. 19 yard scamper by the Dragon Three, Xander Smith. So far, that's three different players sitting at quarterback. So, Three key point men for the Dragons offense so far taking snaps. Dragons showing a little bit of speed on the edges this evening. And a little power up the middle with Brumfield. Emma Marshall back for the extra point kick. The snap holds good. The kick is good. With 11 minutes and 53 seconds left to play in the second quarter, the Fairland Dragons hold a 14 to nothing lead over the Tulsa Rebels. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Number 21, Tevin Taylor for the Dragons back to kick. Not too bad of a kickoff. Back to the 21-yard line. Defoe just got hit pretty good. Good return. Blank remains on the tackle. Blank remains on the tackle, and that was returned by Gavin Meadows. Seems like he's uh, Mr. Do-It-All for the Tulsa mm -hmm. Rebels right now. Well, you know, before we started, he was one of the players that you pointed out that was an important part of that team, big player in their, uh, in their production. So. There was a couple big blocks on that return. Oh, yeah. Pads are popping at 10.30 here in Proctorville, Ohio. I'm out A little bit of confusion on the side of the Rebels. They want to take a timeout real quick. And we'll take a timeout along with them. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. And we're back. Looks like now this is the Tulsa Rebels I'm used to seeing right here. A little yeah. power football lineup here. The direct snap power. Big hole. He's got a lane. He's brought down at the about the 12, 15 yard line of the Freeland Dragons by number five, Brennan West. That was a good game by the Tulsa Rebels. That was a. Uh, as soon as it happened, Brendan West, key, great angle, great angle. And they work on that. Yep. Those angle tackles are going to be timeout in Fairland. After that big gain, Coach Cunningham wants to have a little chat with the uh, defensive alignment. When they see that, they need to do a little bit of a shift. We used to call that play, uh, Charlie, as well, whenever our boys were in the youth. We lined that up. And uh, just a big power play. You put your backs on right behind your lineman, and it's just, hey, let's, we're running right here. See if you got the manpower to stop us. And that lineup that the Dragons were in, that 4 3, it's not going to get the job done when you got eight men coming at you. Well, it's just, they, 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 I don't know if they were intended to shift or what, but it was just overload to that side with just the base defense. It's called the old Buckeyes, what we <laughs> used to call it Buckeye Blast. That was ran to perfection on that play. That has to give the Rebels a little bit of confidence now after getting a couple scores put on them. Hey, we're back in this. We poke this ball in the end zone here, and we're right back in this ball game. I think that may be their first, first down of the night. Yep, looks like they're going back to that power. Nope. Michael Sick comes up, meets the running back this time, and it's going to cause them to lose maybe a yard, yard and a half. It's going to be second down in a – second down in 12. This is a good, good adjustment by the Dragon defense. To, that's one of those fool me once, shame on <laughs> – what was it? Fool me shame once, on you. shame on you, fool shame me twice, two. shame, shame on, me. on me. That's right. A 
the Rebels are taking an awful long time to get the plays called into the huddle and out and lined back up. But they're in more of a traditional set here, and it's a snap. Quarterback rolls to the right, looking for somebody wide, and it's going to be brought down. After gaining about maybe a yard, yard and a half. Stopped by J.D. Brumfield. Five foot nine, hundred and ninety six pounds, sophomore for the Fairland Dragons. Brumfield's worked really hard in the offseason to get stronger and faster, and it, it it's showing. It's showing a lot so far tonight. We got trips to the top side for the Rebels. One split wide left on the bottom. Want to blow it up to the deep to stit. There's the flag. A little bit of pass interference. That'll be a first down for the Rebels. It'll be 10 yards from the uh, down marker. They'll put the ball about at the uh, nine yard line of the Dragons. Now in high school football, that's not an automatic first down. That is correct. You are correct, so it'll be Third down and two. Cunningham is not real happy about that call. Can't say that I, I can't say that I blame him. I, I don't know that I necessarily agreed with it. I don't think the wide receiver even knew where the ball was. So. Well, if you can't get to it, act like you got held up or got yeah. knocked down. That's not a bad choice mm -hmm. to try either. Maybe you can get a call and looks like he sold and the referee bit, and that's what we have. Third down and Two from the nine-yard line for the Rebels. I'm looking for some tire football here again. Quarterback sneak. Don't look like they gain much. Fourth down and three for the Rebels. Long two, short three. That was tackled by the interior of that Dragon defensive line. Big play here for the Dragon defense. I'll start. Why on the play? Ball start against the Rebels. That'll back the Rebels up five yards. That'll make it a little bit harder for the conversion to be fourth down and seven. Most likely going to be a passing situation here. That <clears throat> I agree with you there, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> we might run into another delay situation where the Rebels are going to have to use a timeout because that play clock's been running. They're down to 8-7. I don't know how official that play clock is there. There's your timeout. There's the timeout we were talking about. Rebels. So that's their second timeout of the half. They have one left with nine minutes to go in the second quarter. The Fairland Dragons up 14 to nothing. You're watching Armstrong Sports with Armstrong Neighborhood. And the Rebels break the huddle and they come back out on the field. It's fourth and seven. Kind of in a trip to the bottom. Single wide to the top, single back. Shotgun formation. Snap, got a little pressure. And it looks like it was incomplete. It's going to be a Dragons football. Good coverage by the Dragons number seven, Gavin Hunt. The Dragons will take over around the 16-yard line. Max Ward jogs onto the field for the Dragons. Looks like we're going back to more 
more of a traditional conventional, offense. Yep. Yeah. And what's conventional anymore for the Dragons? That's right. Mm -hmm. Three to four wide, a little spread. <coughs> Hand off to Brumfield. Slips. Brumfield Tackled by that uh, notorious 13-yard line. We'll lose a yard or two. Be second down and 11. Charlie, this uh, weather's really cooled down good for the kids tonight, though. Oh, yeah, it was, it was relatively, it was in the probably mid-80s uh, when the game was supposed to start originally. That rain came in, blew through, and really cooled it down. I'd say it's probably in the, what, maybe the high 60s? I'd say probably at the most. And I'll make it official here in a minute. Little flip pass. Oh! oh. That could have been dangerous. Good effort right there. By the big defensive lineman of the Rebels, number 61, I think is his number. And that is T.J. Jackson. Trying to flip it over his head to uh, Brumfield, and just about disaster happened. So we'll have a third down on 11. Like maybe Xander Schmidt back in at quarterback. Two back splits, side to side, Xander Schmidt. We got, got a, a flag. Start. I think we got a false start on the offense. Well, play. Delay, game. delay a game. Got a delay yeah. against the Dragons. Five yards, that'll back him up. That's an awful quick play call, but hey, mm -hmm. what do I know? I'm not keeping track. That'll make it third and 17. We talked about a little bit ago, Charlie. There's not too many third and 17, 18-yard plays in the playbook, I don't think. But we'll see what Coach Cunningham draws up here deep in his own territory, see if he's going to be a little bit conservative or if he's just going to let it fly and see where it lies. Pass falls incomplete at the 30-yard line. Looking for Brennan Pass West. That was Gavin Hunt on the throw. And it looks like he's down again with cramps. So we'll take a timeout with eight minutes and 25 seconds left to play in the second quarter, and the Dragons leading 14 to nothing. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. High school football Friday night. Like the first punt of the night for the Dragons. Is that uh, freshman Blake, Blake Sammons? Sammons back there to punt? You're looking for here's a good snap and just get the kickoff without a block. And that's not what happened. And the punt's blocked down at the four yard line of the Dragons. And we got a lineman down. It's like number 73. Kobe. Kobe Newman. And looks like Xander Schmidt slipping a little bit. <laughs> Tulsa Rebels will take over at the four yard line. First and goal. Well, so first and goal, the ball is the four yard line. And that'll be a touchdown for the Tulsa Rebels. Touchdown, top lead. We'll come on for the extra point here. Looks like we got a kid cramping up here on the Rebel sidelines. <clears throat> I 
And we're going to go for two. We're going for two. We are going for two. And that stopped right where it started. Number two, J.D. Brumfield on the tackle. And with eight minutes to go in the second quarter, we have a 14 to six score in favor of the Fairland Dragons. Short kick. Looks like Michael Stead on return. They'll get brought down about the 49 yard line of the Fairland Dragons, but we'll take over first and 10. Brumfield on the carry, gets Brumfield outside. Going to pick up about six yards. Down one, Second down and four for the Fairland Dragons. Second by the Tulsa's number one, four. Zach Ball. Brumfield with the run, pick up about three yards. Tackled by a bunch of uh, Tulsa Rebels there. Let's go, Let's go third, down two for the third down and two for the Dragons. A long two at that. This is an important drive for the Dragons, try to get some momentum back after the last score by the Rebels. Hard run by Jordan Williams. He didn't have any room at all. He still picks up a good hard yard. Should have been tackled for a two yard loss, but picks up a yard. That was a good hard run. Be fourth down and about mm, a long one, a short two. Be a false start on the Dragons. That'll back him up five yards. It'll be fourth and six for the Dragons. A little miscommunication. False start against the Dragons. Ten seconds left on the play clock. I know the Dragons are going to be able to get this we'll off in time. We'll have to call a timeout here before they yeah. get a delay. Yeah. They, they get the snap delay. off. Looks like Smith's going to have a little bit of a sweep. He's going to get stopped short. Picked up about no three problem, yards, man. maybe. The Rebels will take over at their own 45-yard yeah, line, first and ten. Looks like Schmidt got dinged up a little bit. He's going to be all right. He's getting up. He's a tough kid. Looks like we're going to have an injury timeout. We'll be back. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Network.
Defoe, 24 back in the backfield now. Yeah, the hunt down and with. Yep. Xander down. Good evening. Yep, riders at safety. Ooh, big stick right there. By J.D. Brunfield on the blitz. Lost about three yards by the Rebels. It'll be second down and 13. I don't know how if you're the Rebels, how you let that man get free. <laughs> I'd have two guys lined up on that man. That young boy's a heck of a ball player. Got a nose for the ball, doesn't he? No doubt about it. Good pick up right there. Eight yard gain. For the Rebels. I think it was Tanner Coffley on the carry. Third and five. Midfield for the Rebels with 4.27 left to go here in the second quarter. Rebels line up in the power house backfield. Pass complete, down to the 38 yard line, tackled by Tevin Taylor for the Dragons. Dragons brought the house, since they brought the house. Good pitch and catch by the Rebels. Top of the ball carry there. It looks like he got tackled by number 18, Ryder Sloan, for the Dragons. Pick up about two yards. He's second down and eight for the Rebels. It's getting to be a pretty physical contact contest here this, this evening, Charlie. Yeah, I think the... Uh the rain delay kind of led to a little bit of a sluggish start. Uh, everybody's starting to feel it now, becoming a lot more physical of the game. Nice run. Looks like that's going to be a first down for the Tulsa Rebels. Jordan Beckelheimer on the carry. That was number 55, 245 pounds senior. Looked like the Rebels are trying to run their own little powerhouse set here. Now he ran into a host of the Fairland Dragons there for a short game, maybe two. Two yards at the most. That old left side of the Dragons line. Looks like number 55 for Tulsa, but I do not. He's on the bottom. Jordan yeah. Beckelheimer. He's regularly number 90. They changed oh, okay. him Okay, there week. we go. Big bodied senior at 245. Gotta run that little pass again. Wide open. Big gain for the Rebels. All the way down to about the three yard line. We'll take over first and goal with 2.20 to go in the second quarter. First and goal from about the 
four and a half yard line for the Rebels. Still confusion looking back at the bench to get a. Down to the uh, maybe half yard line. It's going to be second and goal. Which I think it's time to line them all up in the gaps and shoot them, coach. Stoltz is just going to run the clock here, make sure you don't have enough time to have the ball left in the second quarter. There's a minute and a half left. I don't them back up. Getting the play call in here. Touchdown, Rebels. Tanner Copley in for the one-yard touchdown run. That'll bring the score to 14-12 with a minute and 11 seconds to go with the extra point coming up. And I'm sure they will go for two to try to tie the score. Dragons defense looked a little bit tired on that drive, Charlie. Maybe there's big bodies on that uh, Tulsa offensive line and starting to wear on them just a little bit. Conversion is no good. So with a minute and 11 to go here in the second quarter before half, the Freeland Dragons are still on top, 14. Tulsa Rebels, 12. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Tulsa Rebels set the kick off. <coughs> Tevin Taylor back deep. Brennan West and that Brumfielder Stitt on the far side. That's Michael Stitt. Oh, good block. That's a oh. late hit. That'll there be 15 is. more. We'll get the ball down at the 35-yard line of the Rebels. And they got an injured player as well. We have a timeout on the field with an injured player. Dragons will pick over first and 10 at the 35-yard line with a minute and two left to play until halftime. There we go, he's back up. That's Zach Ball for the Rebels. He's been a little active so far for the Rebels. Looks like he's cramping a little bit. Picks up about a good solid five yards from the Fairland Dragons. He's second down and five from about the 29 yard line. 45 seconds. A little bit of miscommunication with the handoff right there. They'll bring it back to third and about seven for the Dragons. Looks like Coach Cunningham's going to take that timeout. With 21 seconds left, Dragons call a timeout. The third and eight probably on the down marker. Yeah. I'm sure the 
is here. You expect to pass interference. You don't let him get it all. Oh. Work fastball in the plate. Let's go. Put up the heat. Why not? Yep. Let's go. Barely got a hand on that ball. That would have been a big conversion right there. Let's go. Now fourth down and eight. With 15 seconds left to play in the half. Let's go. Let's go. Kevin Hunt's a six-foot senior. I'm junior. Big target to throw to. Line just got to give Ward a little bit of time to get the pass off. There's Lob. Oh, and it is bobbled and then dropped. Tulsa will take over first and 10 around the 32 yard line of their own with eight seconds to go in the half. That ball was bobbing around and I thought Hunt just about come up. I thought he just, I thought he did too. It looked like it went. Maybe through his hand. After it went through the hands of two, two of the rebels. Yeah. But I like the play call. Throw it up and see what happens. Give your athlete a chance to make a play. Now you got to defend one play. Yeah, and they down to five seconds on the clock. So you got to wonder if they're just going. to, Nope. Well, maybe not. We got eight seconds left. If they're going to run a player, if they're just going to down it. Quarterbacks under center. Yeah, just going to take a knee and yep. go into halftime. With a halftime score here at Fairland Stadium, the Dragons home team 14 and the Tulsa Rebels 12. You're watching Armstrong Sports on Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Opening the second half. Nothing like starting the. Uh... Second half of a football Close game at 11, 11.30 at night. <laughs> Still exciting. Yes. Nonetheless. Friday night football, man. It gets in your blood. It sticks with you. Kick off. Looks like it's going to go to West on a bounce. He picks it up and gets a little return. Breaks a little hole. He's going to have a lane. Got some speed. He gets brought down about Ooh. the 34 There's with the, the horse collar. The and there flag. it is. That'll be another 15-yard line. 15-yard penalty for the horse color from the 42, 32, 27 yard lines where the Dragons will take over first down and 10. Now, if That's I'm not some big momentum right there. If I'm not mistaken, they changed the rule to where it's no longer grasping the shoulder pads from behind, but if you grab the jersey from behind, it's considered a horse collar. That is correct. It doesn't even matter if you really pull. If you grab a hold of it for a little bit and don't let go, and I mean, they're going to call it. It's a... Uh, Emphasis of protection, the, protecting the runner. And uh, the referees have been told to uh, call that this year. And right now we've seen it a couple different times at the foundation game and now here at the opening season. Looks like Kobe, Kobe Newman's back in at tackle. Look, he's okay from coming off the field a little dinged up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe a little stinger or something. Got Ward back at quarterback. Hand off the sit, and he's met in the backfield. Little water bugs, you want to get a couple yards of positive. Made a lot of nothing, a little bit of something out of a lot of nothing. That's a heck of a run by Michael Stitt, the senior. The uh, second down and eight for the Dragons. Two yard loss into a two yard game. Easily two yard loss. I mean, he didn't even get his momentum going on two steps before he got met in the backfield. Somebody missed their assignment up front on that. Coach Cunningham had talked to us earlier saying that the line is a little bit young this year. It's a work in progress. And we'll hand off the stead out wide. Looks like he's going to be close to the first down, if not have the first down. I believe down he has the, the first down. Yard line. That'll be a first down for the Fairland Dragons. First and 10. Tackled by uh, number 77, Stone Sarton for the Rebels. He's a 6'1", 275-pound senior defensive lineman. That's a good hustle down the line to uh, catch the water bug. Michael Stitt of the Fairland Dragons. I did get uh, confirmation at halftime. We couldn't see the blocked punt earlier by Tulsa. We couldn't really see what player it was, but 
I, t I was talking with one of the coaches from Tulsa, and it, it looked like they they believe from what they saw it was number 77 Stone Sarton uh, that had that block. So uh, that was a good block. Got to give them credit when they make a good play. Brumfield with a short game for the Dragons will be second and long. This is an important drive for the Dragons. They got the ball in good field position. Uh, they need to get a score in right here to gain the momentum in the second half. Because the handoff is stood out wide again. He's got some room. He's got enough room. He's going to get in the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Fairland Dragons. We want to go for one here. About a 15, 16 yard scamper from Michael Stitt for a touchdown. It just looks like that the side-to-side uh, -side speed of Tulsa is, is is having a hard time matching matching the speed of those uh, of the backs for for Fairland, especially Stitt. Got Emma Marshall back to kick the extra point for the Dragons. Snap holds good. Kick. That's going to be a little bit wide to the left. And with that. The Freeland Dragons come off the field with a lead of the opening drive of the third quarter, leading the Tulsa Rebels 20 to 12. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Nevertheless, that's what the Dragons needed to uh, start the second yes, half. Yes, they did. And, you know, to get that ball, get possession, get it poked into the end zone, get some momentum going on their side. Mm -hmm. uh, Looks like Tevin Taylor is going to do the kicking again uh, for the Dragons. This Dragon crowd seems to be pretty quiet even after the score. So. Picks it off. Picks it up at the 20. And he's he falls down. down on his own. That 30-yard line is a mean <laughs> devil. Takes the return number eight. That's uh, Meadows again, Mr. Do-It-All for the Rebels. Reached up and grabbed him and brought him down. That's all the uh, spirits of the Freeland football players have passed, reaching up to grab the ankle of uh, Mr. Meadows, bring him down at the 30-yard line where the Rebels will take over first and 10. Make sure we get that, get that on the stat sheet for the 30-yard line. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of all past Freeland football players sitting out there on the field. Rebels break the huddle with that same power backfield that they ran the whole second quarter against the Dragons. And the ball, he's thrown it to the Dragons and looks like we recovered it. The Dragons recovered it. Can't tell who that is. I think it's J.D. Brunton. No, nope. it's Brennan West on the recovery. Just like the first half, Charlie, the Dragons got a big turnover to start the game pretty much and get in good field possession for the Rebels, and they hand the ball back over to us here in the second half. Was it I, now I couldn't see was it a bobbled just a, a bobbled handoff? I or? think the handoff actually got to the back and when he tried to get a good grip on it, instead of just creating a pocket, it popped out on him mm -hmm. and then he reached for it and smacked it even further in front of him and it landed right in Brennan's chest pretty much, right in his lap. But we'll take that uh, thirty yard line keeps handoff. handing up gifts to it the does. dragons today. There you go again. Hand off the run foot. He's gonna go out wide. Looks like a big block. Looks like we're big gonna block. have a Just pulling up at some little yellow laundry. And there's a late hit, and there's another flag. So we got two flags on the play. One's gonna be an illegal block, and the other one's gonna be a late hit out of bounds. So that'll be a first down for the Dragons after the unsportsmanlike conduct of late hit is added on to or put on to the penalty that the Dragons will be receiving for the illegal block. So push come the shove. It's gonna be pretty much first down from about the 25 instead of the 30. The Dragons will gain five yards on both of these penalties by the time it's over. Let's see what the referee's gonna make a call. I'm pretty sure I saw a uh, illegal block. It was close, but it was illegal. Hands was just behind. Holding. A hold on the Dragons, that'll Holding. be 10 yards. Then a Person, that yeah, ball person foul, foul, 15 foul. against Rebels. That'll be 15 yards in penalty. So 10 yards back, and then we'll march it 15 yards back towards the end zone for the Dragons. And be a first down and 10 from there. Oh, it made me look bad, and he moved to the 24 instead. My math is off. But anyways, <laughs> he's got, he's got short legs. He's tough. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 make it. 
first down and I thought a personal foul was dead ball. Automatic first down. Yeah. Hmm. I stand corrected. Hand off the straight out wide. Play that ran for touchdown earlier. Picked up enough for a first down there. That's that water bug. <laughs> he goes in and then he just pops out the other side. five yards this side of where you think he's at. That's of course from White Conduct on both teams. Looks like number 73 for the Dragons. I can't tell who for the Rebels. Referees are trying to di discuss what may have happened here. So we're going to take a check and look and see what we've got. Definitely got some unsportsman likes. Just don't know what uh, what they're going to pray forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. What they're going to turn into? If it's going to be the uh, one on each side and just kind of wave them off, or if they're all on one side or the other. Looks to me like there's one definitely on the Dragons. Seeing that Coach Cunningham escorted the player off the field. Well, there was. There's your unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike against the Green. Unsportsmanlike against the Rebels. It's going to offset. Offset. And sometimes that's the best thing you can do is just have offsetting penalties and be done with it and play the down. And second down and short for the Dragons. Like maybe the Tulsa coach wants a little bit of an explanation. Nine minutes and 39 seconds left here in the third quarter. We've got a second and two from the uh, 20 yard line of the Fairland Dragons. That are Currently holding a uh, eight-point lead over the Tulsa Rebels. But Mr. Brumfield gets the carry here. You got Matt in the backfield. Oh. Broke a couple of tackles. Oh, what a stiff arm. arm. And he's going to bulldoze his way down to the three-yard line of Tulsa Rebels. There the flag, flag. that's going to be a late hit on the Rebels. And that'll be extended on closer to the goal line. We're starting to lose some composure right here. We've got to get our... Uh, uh, Game under control. Both teams need to get under control a little bit and not let the uh, emotions come and uh, affect our play here. What, what a stiff arm by Brunfield. That young man runs with authority. That's a heck of a run. Yes. He broke probably three tackles mm -hmm. at the line of scrimmage. Arm tackles at that, but still he broke it. And then that stiff arm, like you said, that was beast. No. Bad snap, but Bamfield oh. gets it in anyway. Touchdown. Number two, J.D. Brunfield for the Fairland Dragons. Hard run. That'll tally up the score to 26 to uh, 12 as the extra point team rushes onto the field for the Dragons. Emma Marshall back for the kick. The snap's good. Kick is good. With nine minutes and one second remaining, the score of Fairland Dragons 27, Coastal Rebels 12. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel.
Taylor back to kick. Blaine and the foe on the tackle. Rebels will take over at the 27, their own 27-yard line. Start their next possession. Well, what the foe lacks in size, he, he makes up for it. And, uh, and heart. Uh, and heart, that's yes, for he sure. Does. Tulsa decides to do to change it up. Thank you. I think that was Copley hearing the ball. That might have been uh, Kazee on the tackle, I think. Kazee looked low. like. Uh, Sloan, Sloan maybe got in his head too. in there. Yeah. yeah, come up from the safety spot. I don't know. It looks like. Nope. Looks like Sloan's coming up into that uh, monster position. Yep. Because he's Kazee. in there on that one with a little bit of help of Tevin Taylor. Good job if you can't if you can't get him down at least hold him long enough for somebody to come and help your friends to come help you that's right yep. defense swarming a little bit there for the dragons bring up a third and five for the rebels it's a big down here for the defense to get a stop here and force a punt get possession back with a 15 point lead Bad Fumble. snap. Looks like the Dragons recovered it, perhaps. No. Tulsa's going to maintain possession, but it's going to bring up a fourth down and six now. Looks like Tulsa's going to punt. Referee's calling time here for some reason. Stop the clock. There you go. Smart, yeah. Gavin. Just leave it alone. Yeah, if the ball gets by, you just got to let it go. We got a flag down here for some reason at the 40 yard oh, line. Fairland's 40. You got a hold, man. Yeah, it looks like he's grabbing his wrist for a hold on somebody. So that'll back him up from the 21 back to about the 11 or 12, wherever the ball is located at. I, I was focused on the ball, but that seemed awful deep down the field for a hold. The Dragons were set up for a fake. Playing a little punt safe. Yep. Watch in the back, it looks like. Nonetheless, that'll back the Dragons up. Looks like Tulsa actually flipped the field with that penalty. Dragons will be inside their own 20-yard line to start this drive off. About at the 12-yard line for they'll take over first and 10. There's a flag down. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, we got the flag. It's going to be probably a little motion on the green team, if I had to guess. Or illegal shift, something like such as that. For the free call. Yeah, yep. legal shift against the Dragons. That'll back him up five yards. Nah, it's not the way you want to start the, start the drive. Back at their own eight-yard line now. Got twins to the right. Make sure we got the ball set in the right spot. Go hand off to Michael Good Stitt. Scene. He's got a little room. Good move. Way to protect the football, son. Gets down the 25-yard line. That'll be a first down for the Dragons. Nice little run by number three, the senior, Michael Stitt. Got a little, another lineman limping a little bit. Needs to be careful with that little bit of that swim move like that. He hangs that ball out there. And... Dragons break the huddle first and 10 from the 25 yard line. Kind of a bobbled snap there a little bit. Going to be second down 11 from the 24. Dragons break the huddle. Out the hunt. Nice He's going to have enough for a first down. Pitch and oh. catch. Looks like he went down over there on the uh, turf. A little mat. was a little slick from that rain we've had. For an injury timeout with 4.54 to go in the third quarter, we'll take a break as well. It's Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Injured player on that was uh, Gavin Hunt. Looks like he's jogged off the field. He's going to be okay. First down. That'll be a first down for the Fairland Dragons at the 39, their own 39-yard line. Not sure what we're waiting on here. Oh, equipment timeout here. Oh, Players, okay. sorry. Okay. I didn't see that, guys. I see it now. It's like, Jordan, equipment. it's like Jordan Williams has replaced uh, Hunt out wide. Michael Stitt on the carry. That was a pretty hard, heavy hit by uh, Jordan Beckelheimer, I believe, number 55. No, he's right here. They put move. I think they moved Mason out to tackle. Casey, come back. Yeah. Number 77, Stone Sarton with a big hit on J.D. Brumfield after picking up about two yards. Be third down and eight for the Dragons. Sarton's a hitter. Yes, he is. Him and Beckelheimer are two loads. Sarton comes in at uh, 
you know, just a kind of a smaller feller, six foot one, two hundred and seventy-five pounds. <laughs> and guy. Beckelheimer just a tad bit lighter at two forty-five. That's two big men right there. Third and eight for the Dragons. Pitch and catch. Williams, he's open. Makes a little move, enough for a first down. Goes out about at the 42-yard line of the Tulsa Rebels, 43. First down and 10 for your Fairland Dragons. First down. <laughs> Snaps are bad. Bad snap. Yep. Dragons recover, fall on it, about a three-yard loss. Good job to J.D. Brunfield to cover that snap. Dragons break the huddle, third down and 13, 14. Or second down, 13, 14. Sorry about that. Oh, we have a little slip. We tried to run it out. That'll be able to slip. West fell. It's going to be third down now, 14 for the Dragons. Math doesn't. Okay, there we go. Three off, two in, just kind of. Yeah, you got to get that third yeah. player in there. And that's the third player, number 14, Gabe Williams. He's another little uh, shifty, a little, uh, shifty. A little dancing outlaw nickname for that boy. And it serves him right because he is very shifty, almost like Michael Stitt in the water bug. Got trips to the bottom side, single high. Third and 14 for the Dragons. Got an out pass. Looks like that's going to be intercepted at the 35-yard line by number 61, T.J. Jackson for the Rebels. But they'll take over first and 10. With two minutes and 40 seconds to go, the Fairland Dragons leading 27-12 over the Tulsa Rebels. Time for the Dragon defense to step up their game here and get us another stop. That should be illegal uh, huddle break right there, 12 men, but not called. Copley carrying the ball, brought down by number 21, Tevin Taylor. Looks like uh, Tulsa's going to want to speed it up a little bit. Uh, two minutes to go in the third quarter. It ain't that desperate time yet, but maybe they're trying to see the Dragons a little bit tired. Maybe they think they can push them around a little bit. Low snap. Got a gain nevertheless, about third and one now. Not bad for a busted play. Looks like uh, Kyle Rankin was in on that tackle. He's coming out. Wellman's going in. George Wellman going in. Looked like he got banged on the shin a little bit. Get him off for a little breather real quick. Third and short. Looks like the Rebels are going to uh, trying to get a play call in. Taking some time to get that play in. Start hustling up to the line to get it off. Quarterback sneak going to be short. It's going to be just a tiny bit short. It's going to be fourth down. Uh, it looks like taken he... by Casey Hudson, number 56, and a couple of the other Dragon interior linemen. Go, oh, okay. Yep, they gave the get... top spot, not the bottom spot, so that will be a first down. The bottom referee had it short. The top referee had it good, and they went with the top spot. So the Rebels take the ball with a first down and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Looks like the backfield's getting an early jump, Charlie, but they get nothing there on that play. Oh, 
Tackled by the J.D. Brumfield right there. Fans are starting to get a little excited. Second down and nine. Second down and ten for the Rebels. We got twins to the left. Split wide to the top. That's movement. And there's a flag. And that's incomplete. That'll bring up a third down and nine. I say the Dragons will decline this penalty since it was an incomplete pass. Yep, Coach Cunningham's waving his arms. He doesn't want to accept that penalty. Going to bring up third and nine. Long nine at that. Yep. Sixteen seconds left in the third quarter. Creeping on just past midnight. So we are now officially playing Saturday. I can't, it's Saturday morning football here. <laughs> there you go. Twins down on the bottom, single wide high, quarterback. The little hitch, nothing there. It'll be fourth down coming up for the Rebels. Fourth and long. Looks like the Dragons defense did a good hold this time. And I don't think they're in a position where they can go for it yet. That's a little bit uh, down distance, a little long, and they're on their side of the 50, Charlie. I think a smart play here would be to uh, go ahead and kick it away. But it looks like they're going to stick here, and they're going to try, and uh, they're going to go for it on fourth and nine. Tells you what I know. It's why I'm up in the booth and not down on the field making calls, Charlie. <laughs> Braylon's bringing the house. Gets the throw away. Oh, and there is a flag. We got a helmet off for some reason, and a flag comes in late. My guess is there may be some type of, maybe a, oh, they're calling fairly. talking about the call but we're just going to have to wait and see what the referee's call on this one I know a Fairland player had a helmet off don't know if that was uh, took it off intentionally or had a little bit of help with it but it looks like it's going against the team in green is that a, is that a 15 yarder Rebels break the huddle with the first down and 10 at the 38-yard line. Well, the Phantom call, the referee won't even make a motion to see what the call was. And the Freeland fans are frustrated. He's calling pass interference on the Dragons. Never seen pass interference and a defender get the helmet knocked off. Nonetheless, first and 10 for the Rebels. Shotgun, throws it up deep. Ooh. We got a flag coming in late. It's going to be another pass interference on the Dragons. I don't know about that, Buzzy. That looked like an awful, awful good defended. Uh, I think he play. had his body turned, hand out, knocked the ball down, looked for the ball. Uh, defender has a right to turn his body and find the ball, you know, and if he knocks it down, he knocks it down. He can't help it if the receiver runs into him, but I didn't even see much contact there. That's the thing. Yeah. Nonetheless, it doesn't matter what we think. It's a first down for the Rebels down at the 23-yard line. Dragons defense just to need gain a little bit of composure. Bite down here. Hold them tight. Don't let those calls uh, get you down. Or get your motions too high or too low. A little bit of movement. We're going to throw it up again. 
and that's going to be an incomplete pass. So we're going to come out of the third quarter at second down and 10 around the 24-yard line. But at the end of the third quarter, your scores, your Fairland Dragons 27, your Tulsa Rebels 12. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Looks like Tulsa's going to rush back to the line of scrimmage and get ready to uh, start this fourth start quarter. The fourth quarter as quickly as they can. Charlie, it should be second and ten. How's it second and four? Not sure. How's it second and four when it should be second and ten? There you go. All right, now moving on down. Well, the first down and ten was an incomplete pass. It's not that difficult, men. Should be second and ten. I mean, they can only do what the refs tell them to do with the yeah. sticks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Got a power side, a little Buckeye yep. blast again, yep. Charlie. A little pass action. Oh, that's offensive interference. It should have been. Great play over there by Brennan West mm -hmm. with a hand to the face. Coach Cunningham is making the same plea as what we were saying up here in the booth. It's third down and ten for the Rebels at their own at the Dragons 23-yard line. Got the full power on the left this time, Charlie. Give them a little more field, maybe, but. That's offside, Rebels movement. It's like probably a loss of a yard or two. Bring up a fourth down for the Rebels. Fourth and 12. That's good defense, good pursuit. Way to string it out. The speed of the Dragons secondary come up there and made some good hits. It's gonna bring up fourth and 12. I bet you they're gonna look for that uh, little mob pass that they've been doing. Yeah few times here and hopefully get another of those and little hankies drop on the field if they can't convert with a catch. Looks like they're going to call a timeout. So the timeout on the field with 11 minutes and 21 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll take a break as well. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the new Armstrong Radio. And we're back. Fourth down and 12. This could be uh, an early key point of the game, Charlie, with a 15-point lead. Post Rebels don't have many opportunities left to get the ball in the end zone, and they take a rolling out to the right. The hold. Good pass the line of scrimmage. We got a flag here. Pass the line of scrimmage on the throw. I don't know what the field in the backfield could be. Thinking hold. We got a hold on the Rebels. They climbed. Illegal forward pass. That'll be a decline because it'll be a turnover on downs. Dragons will take over first and 10 at their own 26 yard line. Max Ward breaks the huddle, quarterback. A lot of work for a two yard game, but nonetheless, it's a two yard game. Michael Stitt with a hard carry. We're going to run some power football now. Here comes Riley Kazee in the backfield. I'd really like to see the Dragons get a couple first downs, run that clock down a little Milk bit. The clock some, yes, sir. That would be a uh, big assistance. Brumfield back to kick the snap. We've got 
one wide on each side. There's a flag late. Brownfield was that a couldn't tell if that was a bad snap or if he just slipped through his hands or what, but looks like the Dragons will be a loss of two yards on the play here. What is the flag? With the loss of the with the loss of two or three yards here, I think it'd be smart if the Rebels just decline this. Holding. That's going to be a spot foul, so they're going to take him on back and make it about Holding second and 22 down. instead of third and 10. Maybe a little bit more in third and 22. Let's see here, Charlie. No? About third and 20. Yep. Roughly. 21. Or second and 21. Pass out to Brennan West in the flat. Pick up a, a couple yards, maybe three or four. Be third down and about 17, 18 yards. Main thing is, is they're on that pass. That clock just keeps running. Yeah. Tick, 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 tick. <clears throat> right now, as much as the Tulsa defense is, that clock up there is the uh, opponent of the Dragons with a 15-point lead in the fourth quarter. Yep. I think I can see possibly a safe play call here. Back in your own end of the field deep. You don't want to take nothing too risky here and have a possibility of a turnover. Maybe a little draw play, a little quick screen, something such as that that's safe. Throw out here to Taylor. Makes a little move. Good He's going to have an opening. Nice hard run by Tevin. Nonetheless, that will bring up a fourth down and about five, four or five for the Dragons. And I anticipate a punt here. And that's what we're going to see is a punt. You got to call a timeout, coach, with hardly no time left on the clock. You'll need another lineman out there, coach. There's still a couple short, coach. Two seconds. Call time, coach. Don't take the penalty. But we're going to take a five yard penalty delay a game. One against the Dragons. Got a couple of people coming off the field being injured, coach. So it makes it a, it makes it a, uh, sometimes a little confusing on who should be on what uh, field, especially the way Coach Cunningham substitutes the special team packages. Oh yeah. So it's fourth down and ten from the 26-yard line. Blake Simmons will be punting. Snap. The kick is away. It's a short kick. Takes a little bit of a roll. take over at the 50-yard line, the Rebels will. First and 10 with 8 minutes and 28 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. About a 25-yard punt for Blake Sammons. What we got here? You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Oh, ball's down. Oh, sacked by Brian Defoe and Jordan Williams. That'll be a 15-yard loss for the Tulsa Rebels. That's a big flip of posi field position right there, Charlie. Big time, big time flip of field position. That's a little bit of the slick field action right there. Yeah. Well, but not only that, but I, I think he was, quarterback from Tulsa was looking to execute the play before he had the ball in his hands. Moving just a little bit too fast. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, eager. it'll take a. Dragons will take it. 
And it'll be second down and 24 for the Rebels on their own 42-yard line. Ooh. Oh. Is that Tevin? Yes, and there's some laundry Tevin on the field. Taylor there's some made laundry. a good break on the ball. It just slipped right through his hands. But we have a flag on the play. See what the flag may be. A legal shift for the Rebels. That'll be declined. That'll be third down in about 21 for the or 24 for the Rebels. 7:40 left in the fourth quarter. Man, this long deep distance. I mean, seven minutes and 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. Rebels don't get many yards here. You, it's kind of hard for a fourth and 24 play. You almost think you have to kick, but yeah. then again, you have to think. We got to go for it. We ain't got that much time left. No, there's not a lot of time Down two left. full scores. So we'll have to wait and see what the Rebels do here on third down before we get into that fourth down dilemma. It's been a hard-hitting football game. Dragons a little bit of a prevent defense here. Hmm. That's just a real sluggish. That's a good gain by the quarterback, Tulsa. That was a gain that they needed. Got about 13 to 14 yards back. It's going to be about fourth and 12 now. That's more manageable than what the – Makes you feel a little better about going for it on fourth yeah, down. Yeah, most definitely. Close to midfield, I think you pretty much have to go for it right here. Uh, who is that? Is that 12? Yeah, Jesse Muncy, quarterback. He's feeling that last hit. He jogs off the field. Yeah, you, you, you got to think with here. seven minutes left that you might get maybe two more possessions. it will be tight. Yeah, maybe two quick, more three possessions. Quick, two real quick three announced by the Dragons. Oh, right. To be able to get that type of uh, play. Do have play a timeout. In. Timeout Rebels. Smart move by the coach. Play clock is winding down. You don't need a fourth nation. It's a lot of body. We got trips right. Single wide up top. The Rebels come into the fourth and 13. This is the play of the game. Little inside pressure by Blaine Cremains. Quarterback rolls, and it's going to be picked. No, nope, oh. it's dropped. But nonetheless, it's a turnover on down. Yes. Devin Taylor dropped another interception possibility. Actually, but nonetheless, I, first down for the Dragons. I think at the last minute he realized that if he just knocked it down, they get better field position than if he caught it and got tackled right now, there. Now, if that's what he did, smart move with him. Yes. I'm not so sure if he didn't just drop it. <laughs> yeah, he may have just dropped it, but I, I But I, we'll go with I'm the fact gonna, that I'm he was using get, his head and made a smart yes, play. Good I'm going to say Devin. he made a good play. Dragons take over first and 10 at the 47-yard uh, line of the uh, Tolles Rebels. I think we're going to see a heavy dose of run play, at, uh, just some run game here, Charlie. Maybe, yes run some of that clock. It's a good little hole. Is that Stitt? I don't know if that's Stitt or Brumfield. That that's is Stitt. Stitt. Nine slash ten yards <laughs> running. Pretty good. He made me think it was Brumfield. Lowered him shoulders, got square. Yeah. When he, he's got such a good bend in Charlie. When he mm -hmm. gets low, he, he's just a hard guy to yeah. get down. For no bigger than what he is, you think it'd be a little bit easier to bring down, but yeah. he's not. Bobbled snap, and that brings the Dragons back to a uh, third and about um, 18. It does keep the clock running, though. I mean, Oh, second down 17, excuse me, I apologize. So here I think you just try to run, get four or five yards yeah. twice, and then maybe even run it again. Why take a chance on getting another punt block? Right. You know, they've blocked one, and the last punt, they were kind of close, so you may take your chances on just power running and not letting them get a big play. Brumfield on the sweep. He's got room. He's going to pick up about eight yards, nine. Yeah. 
I think now you definitely would go for it on fourth down if you don't get it here. Yeah, yeah. Third and eight. Good hard run by the 196-pound sophomore. Dragons offensive line firing off, giving them some room on the outside. Fumbles ball, but it's going to be enough for a first down anyway. No harm, Michael. Use out of bounds. That'd be a first down with 4.51 to go here in the fourth quarter. Boy, it's popping him out, wasn't it? He working. He got brown on his pants. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> that green kind of blends yeah, out. Yeah, it does. That's that 55. Yeah, cross he's a big boy. Oh, Tevin, you got to learn to go stay in bounds. We got a flag up top. Maybe the illegal shift. Kristen's going to be so mad. <laughs> it's going to be my fault, like always. Oh, yeah. Dragons break the huddle, second down in 10 slash 11. Side trap. Trap man was missed. Frontfield maybe picks up one, maybe. Be third down and ten. Third down and nine for the Dragons. Yeah, pick up five. Yeah, you go for you it. You pick up five, you go for it. Oh, you're inside the thirty. Yeah, you, you still. You, you're yeah, you might as well go ahead and go for it. Yeah, I, I think even maybe even on fourth down. I mean, you're sitting. Throw it up. Throw it deep. Throw it deep. On four minutes. Down. Four minutes throw left. Deep. Throw it well. deep. Melvin, throw it deep to Gavin Hunt right here on third down. They're not expecting it. He's got man-on-man -man coverage. Throw it deep. There it is. Somebody's come down with it. That was Blaine Cremains coming over there making a little bit of a effort towards that ball. It's a good look. I like the effort. I like the thought. Bring up a fourth down and 10 for the Dragons at the Rebels 25 yard line. This don't count, Doug. Don't play this part. I would have tried that on fourth down and not third. Yeah. Just so the clock runs on third yeah. still. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just me. I know it's more of a surprise on third. Yep. But that's just my opinion. Maybe that was the surprise. We're going for the surprise piece to it. We're going to do it again. Down. Oh, yeah. Pass it out to West. He I got think that. He may have That's that good. Bounce. He did. One foot down, about at the five yard line, four yard line. Be a first and goal, your Freeland Dragons. That little out pattern like that is, is a tough pass to throw for high school quarterbacks. I mean, that's a, that's a good that's a pass quality, by good, Max. Good, good quality toss. Bangs it up in there, gives him push, and he's in the end zone for your Fairland oh, Dragons oh, touchdown. I think that right there, Charlie, will seal the deal. Yes, it will. Come on, Marshall. Let's get that extra point in through the goal post.
Marshall back for the extra point. Snap the hole, and that's good. And your score with four minutes and three seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, your Fairland Dragons 34, the Tulsa Rebels 12. You're watching Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel, and it's past my bedtime. Taylor back to kick for the Dragons. Caught by one of the up men. Nice tackle, Brian Defoe. That was number 13. Tanner Copley on the return. So the Tulsa Rebels will take over first and 10 from about the 38 yard line. Looks like Coach Cunningham's going to keep the varsity D out on the field. Leaf Tulsa is going to have to air it out a little oh, bit. Oh, no in this doubt game. about it. And truthfully, that's our strength. A little short. And you've got Jordan Williams rushing from one end, Blink Ramins rushing from the other <laughs> side, and the possibility of JD Brumfield blitzing <laughs> anywhere up the middle. I like my chances. Yes. Even with a couple of the guys in the backfield not playing in their uh, maybe normal spot, right. Tevin's moved back to a safety. He's more of a Push linebacker, uh, press linebacker. You got Ryder Sloan, who's another backup, uh, playing some DB for Gavin. You know, Ryder's a senior. He's been back there before. He's played some. This ain't new to him. And there comes that blitz. Who did I say? Oh, I, yeah. I said Blumfield, didn't I? I think you're referring to number two. Boy, that's a, that's a football player's dream. Just pin your ears. You know what they're going to do. Get to the quarterback. Third down and about 15 for your Tulsa Rebels. Short 15, long 14, however you want to look at it. Fox running with 325 left to play here in the ball game. You know, this is something to build on for the Dragons to come out and play the solid second half. Mm -hmm. They looked a little bit tired at the end of the first half. That quick score they got open the second half, kind of rejuvenated him and got him going. Yep. Got the excitement flowing back. Another bad snap. Williams is there. Yep. Good sack by Williams. I don't know if he really even touched him, but it was just the pressure, the bad snap, and then the pressure of him coming in was enough to bring uh, Copley to the ground. Be fourth down for the Rebels. It's a hard-hitting Rebels football team. Yes, it is. Looks like they got a punt team out there. Dragons playing a safety here. You get the pen off. Looks like Tevin Taylor's going to let that thing bounce and roll. All the way down to about the 35-yard line of the Fairland Dragons. Coach Cunningham's going to bring his uh, varsity offense back on the field. For the last two minutes and 15 seconds, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, number two and number three yep. just grinding it out. Maybe a little Williams run here and there. They're still trying to work Jordan back to being 100%. Yeah. Been dinged a little bit this early preseason. He's coming around. And there's Jordan Williams I was talking about. Yeah, he gets brought down for about a two-yard loss. Still got some fight left in them Rebels. Yep. Brought down by number 42, Josh 
Wilson, is that who it was? I believe or so. 47. 42. 42. Josh Wilson. He's a junior. Second and 12 for the Dragons. Outside for a little bit of a gain, gets out of bounds, which is probably not what Coach Cunningham was hoping for. But nonetheless, it was a good pickup. It's going to make it a third down and short, maybe third and three. Third, third and third and four. But a minute 22 remaining here in this football game. This morning. Yes, <laughs> this morning at 12.37. 12.37, 12.38 a.m. Saturday morning. Not much I'd rather be doing, though, on 12.38 on a Friday slash Saturday morning than watching a football yeah. game. Well, if you're going to be up. <laughs> Nothing better to do. It's going to be fourth and one. Brumfield's a little bit tired, slow getting up. It's been a long night. A lot of banging heads right there. I think Coach Cunningham's going to run the clock run here and maybe run one more play, not take a chance on taking a punt. He might even call a timeout with one second left on the play clock. Timeout, Fairland. 31 seconds left to play here in the fourth quarter. Dragons have the ball on their own 44-yard line, fourth and one. Uh, I think the scatter bug, water bug, is going to get it right here on fourth and one. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Going to nope. run around and shovel Oop, pass. A little shovel pass, and there's your first down. Safe play, get down, that's right. Good job, Mike Stitt. Get up, easy. That'll be a first down, and that'll be the ball game. The Fairland Dragons will end up pulling this ball game out. 34, Tulsa Rebels 12. Come out on the season 1-0, and and they go into next week against the Oak Hill Oaks in Jackson County, Ohio. We appreciate your time and everybody for watching us and hanging out with us this evening into the early morning of Saturday on Armstrong Sports on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Charlie, had fun. Thanks a lot, bud. Good night. Good night.